Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video I'm going to show you how to integrate your Unify network and Home Assistant if you haven't done so already. It's very quick, very easy, and then we are, we are done configuring the integration itself. I'm going to show you why you definitely should do it, what does it give you, what does it bring. So for example, when it comes 8 p.m., which is bedtime, and maybe your kid's bedroom presence sensors indicate presence, then go ahead and cut off your kid's mobile devices access to the internet. Pretty cool. There are a lot more things that you can do once the integration is done, so let's go ahead and explore it. All right, guys, so we're starting this process. I'm starting off at the official documentation for Unify Network in the Home, in home Assistant. And by the way, this integration was created by Kane610. I really encourage everyone to go into this guy's uh, GitHub and give him a star. This integration is great. The reason I'm starting here is because there are several prerequisites we need uh, to make sure we have. One of these prerequisites is a local user. We will need to create a local user on a Unify console. This local user can be a read-only or administrator. The difference is, and that's up to you, of course. With a read-only user, you will be able to pull in all the data from Unify to your home assistant. And you will, of course, be able to select to create some automations. But if you want to create automations that will also do actions on Unify, the local user will need to be an administrator. So, without any further ado, let's go into my Unify console. Here we are. Let's go into settings, admins and users. I already created a local user, but just for the sake of this demonstration, click on, on create new admin. But make sure you select restrict to local access only because we don't want a Unify account, we want a local account. So, give it a name, give it a password, now it's up to you if you want to give it a super admin role or you can be maybe more granular and give this user full management in Unify Network but none in Protect, for example. Now, I already created this user so I'm not going to click on Save and as long as we're in the, the Unify, uh, Unify interface I'll just want to show you something that we need to put a pin in it and circle back to it later. I created in the security, in the zone-based firewall, two firewall rules. Each of them I've pre-selected several devices and I've blocked, in this case, internet connectivity altogether. And in the second rule, I selected devices and only blocked Instagram and Facebook. Now, for sanity check, I'm going to enable this rule right here, this block social rule right here. I just want to make sure that this rule does indeed do what it's supposed to do because as I said, we'll reference it a bit later, we'll, we will be able to toggle on or off this firewall rule based on Home Assistant based criteria. So let me pull up, let me pull up, sorry, a CMD window and let's try to ping 8.8.8 .8 just to make sure we do have internet connectivity that's great and now let's pull up a new browser window and let's try to browse to facebook.com we're blocked we're not able to access it and now let's try to access espn.com no issues there so we see that the firewall rule is doing what it's supposed to do. So for now, let's click on manage and let's make this rule paused like it was. So now we are done on the Unify side and let's go to our Home Assistant side. That's a demo Home Assistant instance I use for testing and demonstrations. So let's quickly go into settings, devices and services, Add integration, search for Unify, you will find Ubiquiti and under Ubiquiti, Unify Network. Now we need to paste to put in the IP address of our Unify console. And of course the username and password 
of the local user that we have just created. Great. Now you can review this list of all the devices it found and make sure every device is in the correct area. For me, it doesn't make any difference, so I'm going to skip and finish. Now the integration is done, but we're not done yet, actually. Let's click on configure. You don't have to, but I do recommend that you in this section select all of your client devices. Now I know this can be tedious. I'll just pause my recording right here and I will resume it once I'm done selecting all my clients. All right, I'm done. So let's click on next. Make sure all of these checkboxes are checked. Track network clients, include wired and uh, include wired clients, of course. Track network devices and select the Wi-Fi networks you want to track clients on. S click on next. Now this option, you'll need to select devices that you want to be able to toggle network connectivity, not just internet connectivity. Each device you'll select here will have a, a switch or a toggle next to its name. And if you turn on or off the toggle, the device will completely be disconnected from the network. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to select all my clients again. I'm going to again pause my recording and resume it once this is done. All right, I'm done. Now be careful, This in, in this section, I do not recommend that you select each and every one of your clients because this is easily a situation where you can mistakenly completely cut the branch you're sitting on. All right, let's click on next. Check on bandwidth sensors and uptime sensors. Click on submit. And now we are finished. Just for quick reference, Every device that you have checked its checkbox in step two out of three will show up when we go into the device itself with this check with this toggle right here. If I toggle this toggle to the off position, the device will be completely disconnected from the network, not just the internet, completely from the network. So be be careful. One last thing that we want to do. If we'll go to our devices and scroll down, you will see two entries, Unify Network. One of these entries are the place to toggle on or off firewall rules. So let's see if it's this one. No, it's the probably the, the other one. Yeah, here it is. Now, what I want to do here, by the way, here are the two paused rules that we saw before. I'm going to click on the pencil icon right here and I'm going to change the name to Unify firewall rules. It will just make it easier for me to reference this later on in automations. Click on rename. That's great. Now that we've created the, the, the integration, we've modified it to what, what we want it to be or and to include what, what we want it to include. Now is the time that we can start utilizing the power of the integration between Unify Network and Home Assistant. So let's quickly jump into settings and automations, create a new automation and let's start fresh. So just as an example, of course, you can take it as you see fit according to your imagination. Let's say that when a device, for example, a present sensor in your kid's bedroom, for example, becomes occupied, meaning there is presence. And if the time is after 8 p.m., meaning after bedtime, then what we can do is add an action, device, unify, firewall rules. And now we can select, for example, to turn on the block social rule. So in this moment, no one from the devices I pre-selected in the Unify firewall rule itself will be able to access social networks. Maybe then I can maybe wait for let's say eight hours. After eight hours, let's duplicate this section right here, but instead of turning on the firewall rule, I'll be turning off 
the firewall wool so we're back to normal i'm not going to bother into saving it but here's one example of the power we can we can achieve with taking something that happens in your house and then triggering something on unify an ability that is not that is absent without this integration let me clear everything out of here and let's do another example if you have for example a guest wi-fi you can sell you can decide that the guest wi-fi will be by default off and only when you have guests in your house then the guest wi-fi should be on now it's a cord it's up to you if and how you automate it but for me for example i have a manual helper that, uh, that i have a toggle for house guest mode to be on or off just because when i have house guests certain automations should not run but i can take this entity it's called house guest if it turns on from sorry from off to on then i can select this is actually the SSID name of my Unify guest Wi-Fi. I can turn on the guest Wi-Fi. If I want to be even more, let's say, advanced than that, I can maybe add an ID here. So let's call it guest on. Let's duplicate it. So when it's, it, it turns from on to off, and let's say that ID here, guest off. And you can see that now I can select, let's start from fresh here. I'll select the choose condition, building block, sorry, condition triggered by. If, we, if this was triggered by guest on, the action will be to turn on the guest Wi-Fi and if I'll add another option condition triggered by guest off then the action will be to turn off the guest Wi-Fi again taking an ability that is absent without this integration and actually doing things from home assistant to unify network how cool is that now i'll exit out of here and i'll go back to our unify integration i'll go to my udm pro which is my unify console there are a few entities that are that are off by default and i will and i'll now turn them or enable them for example cpu temperature for example cpu utilization for example memory utilization that's just an example i'll now wait around 30 40 seconds and i want to make sure these entities are becoming active and have data in them all right about 30 seconds have went by and i now see cpu temperature cpu utilization and memory utilization and now if I'll go back to settings and automations, now I can create a new automations that when, for example, device UDM Pro CPU utilization, now it has become a, a, an entity or a value I can choose from. So if the CPU utilization is, is above 90%, then what I can do, device udm pro i can restart my udm pro hoping that it will fix the high cpu utilization so you can see the power of how even data that is completely inside unify i can take home assistant to process what happens when certain things happens in unify the 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 matching of the unify network and home assistant gives us possibilities as in for example parental con controls as we can see uh better management of wi-fi and networks and better management or, or maintenance of our unify consoles 
which is something that is super great. There is a lot of value, a lot of things that we can now do that we couldn't do if we hadn't integrated Unify Network and Home Assistant, which is great. All right, guys, so this was how to integrate Unify Network and Home Assistant. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a like. It will tell the YouTube algorithms it was a good video. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.